Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of GenAI Vlog. So I got a quite an interesting episode for you guys today. Today we're going to be talking about how to fine tune DeepSeek R1 and push the artifact to hugging face. So we've all heard of the amazing performance of DeepSeek model. In this episode, I want to uh, pretty much show you guys a small tutorial of how to fine tune this model. So I spent a couple of days in the past scouring the internet and I've put together this tutorial that I believe it could work. So with that being said, let's turn our attention to the collab. So right in front of me, I have this collab tutorial, which of course I'm gonna drop a link on the YouTube. And with that being said, let's get started with installation. First things first, you wanna install the necessary packages and you wanna import Torch and Transformers. So uh, once you do that, you need to define the model. Uh, here I use DeepSeek AI, and this model version is Distill Quen, 1.5 billion parameters. So 1.5 in today's world is not an extremely large model, but you can probably get away with, I'm currently on runtime, uh, runtime type, uh, T4 GPU, uh, high RAM. So uh, here it's because I have Pro Plus subscription, if you don't have it, uh, you don't have high RAM, and I think you'll be able to get away with T4 GPU as well. So uh, that's that. I also tested out Llama 70 billion, and unfortunately I did not get that work on Colab. I believe I have to actually hop on the AWS SageMaker and set up some sort of like a XL large instance to get that working. So if you guys figure out a way to do this in Colab, please let me know. Uh, so once we have the model, uh, we then want to load the pre-trained model and tokenizer using auto model for causal LM. And if you have GPU, then you can set the device to CUDA. So once that's all set, let me show you guys a little bit of a sample text. And the sample text is going to be the training data that we're going to use. Uh, so it's a, not a giant token size. We're talking about maybe like a small paragraph, four sentences, so not a whole lot of length. And here it says artificial intelligence, parenthesis AI is transforming industries across the globe from healthcare to finance. AI applications are revolutionizing the way we approach problem solving and decision-making, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So the goal is simple. I'm hoping in the end of the video, I can show you guys that if I type in the first few words, artificial intelligence, AI is transforming industries, something like that, then the model, after it's fine-tuned over this particular training sample, is then able to give me the rest of the sentences. Or if not, at least get a few words correctly, right? Across the globe, from healthcare to finance, something like that. So if we can do that, then we've proved out the concept that this tutorial, at least the code shown up here, have at least get some of these sentences or some of this information in this paragraph, into the distill model. So um, let's get started with datasets. We do a split by period space, and then we convert the style into dataset style. So in the sense that you see this kind of schema, right? Features, num rows, things like that. And then after that, you wanna uh, set up the tokenizer using pre-process function. After that, you can then do a dataset.map to map the dataset into the preprocess function. Afterwards, you're gonna get a tokenized dataset. And then what's gonna look like is features. Uh, now it has text, input ideas, attention mask, labels, things like that. Text is the original sentence in that paragraph, whereas attention mask is actually blanks uh, that's used to blank out certain words in your sentences. So then uh, it's using the attention mechanism to then guess what the word is in that blank based on the other words around it. Uh, so that's what the mask is for. And we use this function to essentially set it up. Once that's set up, we then need to move on to set up the LoRa configuration. LoRa here stands for low ranking adaptation. Now it's a type of training process that can speed up the uh, training time. And it's fairly efficient because it does not train everything. It only applies uh, the LoRa to specific attention layers. Uh, so for example, here, the target modules is QProj and VProj, right? So 
uh, these are two particular matrix in the uh, configuration. Uh, so once that's done, we want to set up a uh, dropout to be 5% so we don't overfit. And once we have the configuration, we can wrap that model with LoRa config using get path model. So once that's done, uh, the last thing we need to do before training is to set up the training arguments. So in a transformer package, fortunately, we have training arguments that we can use. And then here, um, I'm not going to try to explain everything. I'm just going to point out uh, the gradient accumulation step is to simulate larger effective batch size. And the warm up steps is to gradually increase learning rate to avoid sudden spikes. And I found this quite helpful if you have a warm up step to be like a 200. Last but not least, I uh, actually get uh, st stuck on max steps earlier. I believe if you use num train epoch, you can probably control the number of training iterations much better. And then after that, I think everything else is pretty much straightforward. So once that's done, you can then uh, move model to CPU to free up some sort of a memory, and you are good to go, right? You can initialize the trainer, set up the model, the arguments, the training data, and then after that, you can then do a trainer.train. So here, I can quickly show you the performance. The training loss for me started with 10, uh, but then you realize that somewhere down the road, it's, uh, 160, 170, and then all the way to 270, 280, 300, it drops down to 0 0.01. Uh, so I will say after that, uh, 330, uh, you get to see 0 0.009. Uh, so that's below 0 0.01. So I will say this loss is already pretty small, right? And then uh, 700 down the road, it's 0 0.002. I think that's pretty much the smallest I've seen. So with that being said, now your trained model is ready. You can then set up the domain, save everything locally, right? And please be aware that when you save the model, you don't want to just save the model. You also want to save the tokenizer. So that's what we're doing here. Once you have the model saved, you can use this chunk of code to create a repo using Hugging Face API. And then whatever the repo is, you can then push the artifact from local directory to your repository on Hugging Face. So here I use the push to hub function to push the model up there and then push the tokenizer up there. Once it's up there, it's gonna print out a URL and then you can click on the link and everything should be up there. So this is my link on Hugging Face and then you can click on files and you'll be able to see all of the JSON file, uh, parameters, the artifacts, they're all up here. So let's go back to the collab. Now I want to show you guys the performance, right? So I already ran it earlier. Uh, here you download the fine tune model from the cloud, uh, set up your device, and then you can have this small function to generate some text, right? You send the text into the tokenizer, and then you do a torch no gradient, and whatever that generated, you just decode it. So you return the decoded content, and that's going to be the response, right? The generated text. So here I enter artificial intelligence is transforming industries. That's the first five words in that paragraph, right? And then I set up the max length to be 1024. So it's gonna give me like a small essay, right? Uh, so this is the output. Artificial intelligence is transforming industries across the globe from healthcare to finance. AI applications are widespread. So I think the at least few words behind the scene that got it. Right, so artificial intelligence is transforming industries. And then here it says across the globe from healthcare to finance. So I think that's exactly word by word guessing from the original training data. So let me scroll up to where I uh, created the training data. Here we go. Artificial intelligence, AI is transforming industries across the globe from healthcare to finance, AI applications. So it's got it. So uh, that gives me the confidence that whatever information in that paragraph, now at least some of them have been gotten into this model, right? You somehow know it. And then it's able to take that few words, right? And then start generating new content from there. End of the day, this is a text generation model. So uh, it's gonna uh, present this kind of architecture 
And then that's what's unique for DeepSeek style model is that it has reasoning. So you're going to see something like this bracket slash think that tells user that, hey, whatever's above is probably thinking. And then after it thought about a little bit, it's going to then give you the answer, right? Artificial intelligence is transforming industries across the globe from healthcare to finance, however, accurately estimating, and so on and so forth, right? It's going to continue to generate a bunch of text, a bunch of words. So there you go. Uh, hopefully, this helps explain how to fine tune DeepSeek R1 model, uh, at least at a smaller scale, on CoLab environment. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and like.